Hey folks, Mac T back. That's right. I thought I'd do a uh, impromptu Mac T live and uh, get a hold of y'all and see if anybody wants to get on, discuss anything, and I'll see if we get some members moving in here and uh, starting things up. See what we got going on. And let me expand it out, see if anybody's going to make any contact or anything like that. Um, I do want to say that, uh, uh, first of all, we uh, have, have one member that I know is uh, undergoing some issues. And I do wish him all the best uh, in gaining his strength and getting back up on his feet. So uh, if you all uh, can just, you know, keep... Keep our members in uh, in mind. Not everybody has a good day, and we hope that everybody does. But again, like I say, every day your feet at the floor is a great day. So uh, we just want to keep going in that direction. But I do uh, enjoy all of you, and I had a great week. I had an impromptu vacation. I decided to drive Blueberry down to Florida. It was about a two-day drive, stayed overnight, and I took my daughters with me, and it was a daddy-daughter's vacation, and uh, although it was short, we had a good time. We traveled on the road together, and we got to discuss all sorts of things on the way down and on the way back, and uh, had a good time on the beach. We went and saw Winter the Dolphin, which was a big hit with the girls because they saw the movie, so that was a big thing. Uh, but it was quite interesting. Learned a lot about that uh, aquarium there. They they they're not there for profit. They're there to make essentially donations and apply nearly all the money back into the aquarium to save more animals. So that's a noble cause there. I was impressed on the information I received, and the folks working there were extremely knowledgeable. They answered every and all questions. All you had to do was ask. I have never been to a place that had that many people willing to tell you about what they're doing. So, uh, you know, well worth the effort and uh, seeing all that. But the beach is great, too. Uh, enjoyed it. Really did. We uh, met with uh, Lego, Mike Orr, and Jennifer. Yes, we met them. And Max, what a, oh boy. That was, I tell you what, Max is the most well-behaved little boy I've ever run across. I couldn't believe it. He was sweet. So, uh, you know, it was a joy there. And uh, and I enjoyed actually meeting a couple of members of the group here down in Florida. So that was definitely worthwhile. Wish I could have met some more of you. And uh, it wasn't such a short notice thing. But, hey, got to meet some of you. So that was definitely worthwhile. And I enjoyed it. And that being said, we got the up Coming September Mac T group meet in Rochelle, Illinois, and I think we have at least 13 people. I have made the reservations with the uh, restaurant there, and uh, just wanted to go over you know some things about uh, the meetup. Uh, this is more or less a, uh, a meetup of like-minded people that enjoy the edge and the idea is we all get together and just like we did before we park the edges there i i will bring a few parts and pieces of different things i've tore off of my edge that are used and broken parts and maybe some new ones and things like that um, and i'll have them out there for display i also have my camera and my phone and everything else we'll do a do a live you know feed that we're doing there uh, to broadcast onto the Facebook group and everything. But I also like to go around and uh, talk to everybody about their edge, what they've done to it, uh, you know, what condition is in. We're going to have uh, scan tools there. We can help diagnose any issues if somebody has an issue. Uh, we're going to spend two to three hours out there and then go into the restaurant and have a nice group meal together. Uh, you know, going in there and uh, just enjoying ourselves. Uh, I may <laughs> may have a few giveaways, too. You never know. Uh, so uh, I know for a fact I will. Uh, not a lot, but, you know, companies tend to send me things that they want me to review. And uh, I just got to get them out there with me. And then, of course, CB 
Ian, I think, MG and uh, Mom Osha and a few others may be with me. We might bring both vehicles. So you'll be able to see Blueberry and then, of course, Lou. Yes, the infinite, uh, inf infamous Lou, as they say. Uh, so you'll be able to see Lou and uh, what I've done to Lou and all this other stuff uh, in dealing with uh, the high mileage and everything else and how well it runs. Uh, unless it blows up before then, I don't know. Yeah, who knows? 240-some thousand miles on it now. And uh, <laughs> we're just going for it. But, uh, you know, be there, folks. Let me know when we get closer in about the 1st of September. Um I'm going to contact all of you that are saying you're going to get verification and how many. Uh, if you're by yourself, I need to know that. If you're going to bring a, the whole football team with you, I need to know that. I, the restaurant just wants to know how big a group it's going to be so they can pray. Because I know they got a room in there that they can open up and we can all be together and and go that route. But uh do want to do, and this thing can grow. Uh, somebody mentioned, you know, if we get a big enough group, maybe we could... Uh, uh, somehow swing it that uh, you know one one person mentioned one time uh, renting a drag strip for the afternoon that's nearby there uh, not too far away and maybe we all do our own little timed runs in our Ford edges to see who has, has the fastest and the slowest edge <laughs> I'll take I'll tell you what I'll, I'll make sure Lou's ready for that whether I got to push it down the you know the the drag strip or not, I don't know, but we'll, we'll see what's going on. But uh, I think that would be cool, too, if it can be swung. But for now, it's a, it's like a, you know, Ford Edge uh, meet and greet, and, and uh, we can develop plans, things we want to do in the future, because this has grown. Uh, with 13 of you saying you're going, we only had three last year. So this thing is getting bigger, and I know we have other groups that are wanting to meet in other areas, and I tell you what, folks, if you want to do it, I will help you. Let's put the event on the Facebook group. Uh, I will even do a video on YouTube for it to advertise it if we can get things going. So uh, we can do this. Uh, get people together that love their Ford Edges, Lincoln MKXs. are welcome to. We had MKXs the last one. That's right. So don't don't feel you're left out uh, on this uh, uh, smaller minority of you with MKXs. But... It's the same platform, folks. So if I get carried away and forget to mention the MKX or even the Nautilus, is it that they call it now? Uh, that'd be cool to see that. Uh, you know, if, if I had my druthers and I ever had enough money, I'd probably uh, bring a Ford ST to the uh, works. But I just don't have it, so we're just going to have to live with what, what we have in that aspect. Let's see, Steven's on board here. Uh, he's going and talking about all sorts of stuff in Canada. I don't know. I, I guess he's from Canada. Anybody know where Steven's from? He says Canada a lot. I don't know. Uh, let's see. John says it's time for a nitrous kit for Lou. <laughs> if you want to destroy Lou, that's probably the best way to do it. Holy cow, I just see the pistons flying down. Yeah, that would just, I think that would be the final straw for Lou. If you threw a blast of nitrous in Lou, that'd, that'd probably do her in. Anyway, uh, what else we got? Corey says he can't do anything until his recall is fixed. Uh, I guess rental cars and all that other stuff uh, has become quite a quagmire. Holy cow. Uh, the dealers just, what, folks, what about that? Uh, the dealers just aren't playing, are they? Uh, Ford's having a problem, and all these dealers that, uh, don't want to participate in this endeavor apparently are going to cause Ford a customer service nightmare, uh, which is not good for Ford. So, uh, you know, hopefully they get it all fixed up, and you guys are finding the workarounds and what works. So you need to pass that along to each other in the Facebook group to say, hey, this is how I did it and this is what happened and everything. Because some of them just are not playing. And uh, it remains to be seen what this mileage thing there's making you sign and doing with your edge as far as storing it and parking it and all this other stuff. 
Uh, you know, like I told you all, folks, uh, I my driveway's small. I can barely get a car and a half in the driveway. So if I had that, I would park it in the street. The only problem is, is this, the city has a law that the car can't be parked more than 48 hours. So, you know, Ford says, hey, how come you moved it? I says, because I have to. You know, I had to drive it around the block or someplace and move it back to keep the neighbors from calling the cops on me getting it towed. You know, I can't, I don't write the laws, you know, and I'm going to park in my garage with the car. So therefore, uh, or park in the driveway, you know, I, I can only park in the street. So that's my answer to them. If they want to change the city code so that I can park it there and not move it at all, then I guess that's it. But uh, the idea behind this not driving is they want to keep the miles down so they're not giving you a rental car and you you essentially got two cars. Uh, I think a reasonable and prudent person, that's how the law dictates, reasonable and prudent. Uh, if, you, if you had it for six months and, and uh, the rental car and you didn't drive your edge but 50 miles in that six months, uh, and you state, hey, I had to move it to keep it from getting towed, uh, they're not probably going to say anything. Plus, the engine needs to be exercised. Here's the problem with storing vehicles. It's always a problem. Gaskets dry out, hoses dry out, uh, Freon leaks out of the AC, uh, brakes get rusted, you know, fuel pumps fail. All this stuff's going to happen if you just park it and don't even start it. The battery runs down. All this is going to happen, and a short drive is not going to be long enough to charge the battery. So my advice to you all is make sure that you charge the battery. That's right. Get a battery charger. You're going to need it. Uh, you're going to have to charge that battery to keep it going. But uh, you do need to cycle that engine, move the oil in it, burn out the condensation out of the engine, because uh, it will all gather up and create problems later. So uh, to just think you're just going to park it, I think Ford is trying to alleviate the storage problems of, uh, one, lack of space at the dealerships. Because, you know, if they have 100 or 300 people show up, want to store their vehicles and get a rental, the dealerships can't handle that either. So there's a lot that goes into this. Uh, so they're choosing to do this and, and send you home and have you store it. Well, the other thing is they take on liability if it's stored in their parking lot. Somebody breaks in, steals your head, boom, Bob's your uncle. You know, they, now they got to buy you a new car. Uh, or somebody vandalizes it, or somebody hits it, or so, you know anything. Or they stored it, and now the brakes are locked up from lack of use. Uh, by having you store the vehicle on your own site, all these maintenance issues fall on you now. Uh, so if you think that Ford's, you know, working the system, they are. Uh, they're, they're working it and uh, trying to alleviate what they're exposed to. So, you know, just keep that in mind so that you actually know what's going on. And Stephen is watching me in the dealership inside of a Ford Edge, I guess. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> oh, yeah, let's see. What else? Corey. Corey uh, said two hours from going to the dealer to get in his rental. Holy cow, two hours. Uh, and what else? John says, uh, always top the tank off with stable. That's right, John. I forgot about the gas part. Uh, if you go out and buy the stable, I will tell you, I've used stable, and I do do that in my lawn equipment and everything because uh, gas does get older. Uh, put stable in it, and that will help keep the gas from going bad. But the other thing you need to do and understand is 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 keeping keeping. I don't know. It, there's pros and cons of keeping a full tank or an empty tank. Uh, I myself would rather have a full tank, uh, less condensation and moisture uh, abilities. Emptier the tank, the more the inside of the tank can be coated with moisture too. Accumulation from the hot and cold spells of the weather and the moisture in the air. So, uh, you know, you gotta you gotta weigh in all these different things. And I'm pretty sure that we're gonna start getting complaints about the car sitting, the brakes locking up. Uh, so you gotta exercise your Edge or MKX in that case.
should you uh, have to store it. So um, I'm really curious why, why, you know, have any of you ever thought, why is it that the airbag thing stopped right at 2010? Did Takata start, start making brand new airbags right at the beginning of model year 2010? That's something you really got to question yourself about. You know, what changed? Did they, did they like say, oh, we're going to stop making these and we're going to make them for this model year on? Or are we fudging stuff? I don't know. I'm, I'm not entirely sure about this. So uh, that is something you really got to do. Let's see, Paul, a fortune of issued similar to the clunker eBay and given vouchers. <laughs> It's still cheaper for them to pay for a rental car and uh, have you take it home. That's that's the fact of the matter. Um, there, it's cheaper. They're not going to buy a car back because essentially, if they buy it back, we're we're talking billions and billions of dollars. Then uh, they're not going to do that. You know, I, I might be wrong by billions, but it's going to be a large amount, and uh, I don't think they want to undertake that. So uh, the buyback ain't going to happen. Uh, it's a, it's a, effectively a recall, uh, so they will replace the parts. And this is probably the least expensive way to do it uh, by giving you a rental car. And then when you're when it comes in, and I guarantee you, once these airbags start showing up, they're going to be dropping like dynamos. They're going to be calling people in right and left, telling you, hey, you got to come get your appointment, and your rental car time is just about up. If you don't make this appointment by this time, then you're going to start paying for it yourself. So they're going to have you over a barrel there to get your vehicle in to get it repaired and get the new airbag in it. Uh, so, you know, that that's really where that's going to end up going. Let's see. Billy Young wants to know if I changed the oil. Yes, I did change the oil. And I posted a photo up in the Facebook group. It is a... Uh, I think it was uh, six different types of oil. Not necessarily what I really wanted to put in blueberry, but because uh, they weren't what I considered great oils. But I did give them a good, healthy dose of red line to help back it up. So uh, hopefully the red line pulls its weight and uh, helps out with stuff. But that is the last of my um, uh, oil series oils. So I had like five quarts left and then uh, plus samples out of that. So I put a good quart and a half or more of red line in there to help supplement everything. So uh, the red line is really going to help. But I did change it. Brand new Pure Later Boss filter. And, uh, you know, so the oil's changed. Off she goes. Now she's driving her car again. And I got Lou back and uh, no dents, no scratches. So I was happy. <laughs> But, you know, that's, that's just my concern. Uh, let's see. Any certain brands you would recommend as far as interior, exterior? Use Adams polishes. Great stuff, but expensive. Uh, I'm the wrong guy to ask uh, there, Corey, because to tell you the truth, I really don't wash my cars. <laughs> I don't have time. Uh, my wife will run, run blue through the car wash or something, get it vacuumed out. Uh, but... I've just never spent an effort on cleaning. I'm more of a maintenance guy. Uh, it doesn't matter what it looks like as, a, as long as it's safe and it runs. Uh, so that's my goal. And, and Lou, I run Lou through a car wash quite often uh, just to get the bugs off of it because, quite frankly, tons of bugs all over it just to do the highway. So, uh, But there are a lot of other members that really get into the ceramic coatings and everything. So just ask in the group, and uh, Billy, they'll, they'll give you the answer that you need uh, for what you're looking for, or Corey, rather. Uh, so make sure that you do post that question in there, and they'll answer it. Let's see. Steven, Canadian edges don't count, I guess. But then if I said that, that you'd come back and say, well, all edges are Canadian. <laughs> Go figure. It's all about the weather. Yes, all about the weather. Yes, the Boss Filter is on sale for under 10 bucks. so if you want to get the Boss Filter in, hey, I just bought two of them. Uh, 
and uh, used them both already. And I got two used ones that I'll probably tear apart and uh, check out uh, just to see what they're like. Uh, what I'm really looking forward to is I got a boss filter coming from my Ford Ranger. Uh, and I'll, I'll probably make a video on that. I posted it in Mac T Garage. So uh, I can cover, you know, what's going on there. Other thing I do want to tell the new members, if you're watching this, is that uh, do not forget to go to the social page on MacTGarage.com and click on the map and register your Ford Edge or Lincoln MKX so you can know where people are that are near you that maybe, you know, you want to get together, maybe you want to have help working on your Edge or MKX, Whatever it is, it helps form that social bond and builds a village. And uh, people are meeting. People are forming friendships. It's uh, That's really what it's all about, so do that. And then, of course, above that map on the right, you will find the Donate button to buy MACT stickers and Band of One stickers. So you go there and, of course, buy those, and that will uh, get you a sticker in the mail. And uh, just make it through PayPal. You can use a credit card, whatever you want to do. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a way for me to help uh, get a little bit of money to help pay for the you know things I do on YouTube, like the video I just released. I had to go buy containers and syringes, and I did all this stuff to try to make sure I made a good, accurate video, and that's all out of pocket. So uh, that's how I get money back is through either YouTube or selling the T-shirts. And I didn't mention T-shirts, Mac T's T-shirts, right? Got to do the Mac T thing. Uh, you can buy various flavors of the Mac T logo on T-shirts and all set up. All you have to do is go to the Mac T uh, group there on the web page to buy the T-shirts and the apparel. And it's not just T-shirts. You can buy hats. You can buy sweatpants. You can buy sweaters. You can buy whatever. You know, well, what do they call those? Hoodies. You can buy all this stuff. There's a whole apparel store there for you. To buy these t-shirts and the prices include shipping folks that's right u.s and canada and i think even overseas on in other places if there's an issue then they will get a hold of you t-shirts generally are made and sent out in the mail within uh, about two weeks i think it is and uh, there has not been a complaint yet on the t-shirts they've all managed to make it so uh it's a good good honest uh couple that are doing a doing a business and they are making a great deal of effort to make sure that uh, everything goes accordingly and smoothly so uh, by all means jump in there and buy those t-shirts and help support uh, the channel and uh, me and what I'm doing on videos uh, to just make everything work folks it, it's a time-consuming thing and like I said I started this morning and you know and I just got the video out this afternoon, so it does take time to shoot, to video edit, and then get it all finalized and get out there. So, uh, what else we got going on? You know, I, I will tell you, uh, I posted that little clip there, uh, you know, that bug flying in there. No, that wasn't cool. You know, I just want to re reiterate that that was just green dye, food coloring, and water to help with the video. That's all that was. So, <laughs> no, I'm not drinking coolant. Holy cow, who, who thinks I'm drinking coolant? Uh, <laughs> let's see, what else we got? Charity and Steven are arguing right now, I guess. But Charity's winning, so I, that's what I'd figure would, would go either way. Uh, <laughs> but uh, let's see, what else we got? Andrew says, T-shirts, T-shirts, T-shirts. Let's see. John had a customer with a wastegate falling apart, causing a rattle on the EcoBoost 13 Limited, but engine is the same. Uh, yeah, those wastegates on the uh, two two liter EcoBoost are starting to pop up like popcorn. Uh, I guess that is the Achilles heel of the uh, of the 2O EcoBoost. I haven't heard it on V6s too much yet. Uh, but the, the, the four-cylinder, uh, yeah, I've been hearing that a lot more. Uh, time will tell as these things age what's going to be going on. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to say we're probably going to see more of that. So, essentially, the, the turbo 
Uh, wastegate failure is the Achilles heel, is just like the 3537 water pump is the Achilles heel on those. So uh, you'll probably uh, have something similar to that. Again, the TSS OSS sensors are popping up right crazy. Uh, it looks like they're failing anywhere from 80 to 160,000 miles, depending on what's going on with your edge uh, and uh, MKX, because they, you know, the TSS OSS doesn't doesn't party with favors on that. They'll, they'll pick whatever you know one they want to fail on. So just be ready for that. Uh, Steven says, happy Canada Day tomorrow. That's, I guess, their Independence Day tomorrow, the 1st of July. Uh, let's see. What else we got going on? <laughs> let's see. Something EcoBoost bashes its owners by announcing to public that the owner is missing two cylinders with a badge on the lift gate. <laughs> <laughs> no idea, no idea. I I, I, don't, I I guess I don't get it. Yes, uh, but yeah, I I have to follow the conversation, I guess, in order to make a comment on it. Uh, but hey, we're having a great time here, and uh, uh, by golly, just it's just a great day, and I just wanted to get on and see how many of you are on here. It seemed like it was pretty busy, and. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy with the growth of the MACT Ford Edge Facebook group. Uh, you folks have no idea how fast this group is growing, how active it is. Uh, hands down, it is the most active Facebook group for Ford Edge, uh, Lincoln MKX people and everything else. So uh, uh, that's all on you. You guys keep it moving. Uh, I do a lot of posting, but yeah, you know, I'm doing stuff uh, to, with the Ford Edge and everything else, trying to uh, you know cover everything that I do there, along with the Mac T Garage. So uh, very busy with all this. And uh, one thing I'm not, I'm, how many of you really want to go to back to work after like nine days off? Yeah, I took weekend on both weekends and then five days. So nine days and then starting Monday morning I gotta get back to the old salt mines again and go back to work you now I'm not looking forward to it you know you get in that vacation mode you know how it is you're just like uh <laughs> but I'll jump back into it Monday and hit it hard and strong and and uh, let's see I, I know I am going to uh, Omaha Nebraska again at the middle of this month or end of this month sometime so I'll be back in Omaha, going back to class and everything else that I have to go to. And then again in August, I'll be in Omaha. And that will be my last trip to Omaha, I think, uh, for a while because that will be my last class. And I will uh, obtain my certification uh, in, in my job. So, yeah, that's that's been a long time coming. It's been almost a year. Yeah, it's taken me a year, folks to get this certification and that's almost every month going to classes so it's crazy crazy you know it's, it's but I'm going to be happy to have it and I'll be done and I already got the first uh, certification done I got the plaque for that that was cool uh, nice beautiful little plaque but uh, hey you know things are moving along and that's really what we want to do let's see Sean welcome to the group and uh, Glad you found us. Let's see. I have to. I haven't shaved. You guys. I have not trimmed or anything. Uh, I've I've cut it down. It was getting pretty bushy when I was on vacation, but uh, down in Florida. But I trimmed it down a bit. But yeah. Benjamin says ASE certification. No, Benjamin. It is not an ASC certification. It, <laughs> it is a certified safety and health official. That's right, OSHA. Yeah. Okay. So now you know. That's what my job is. Uh, but I am not with the government. I am a private consultant. So uh, you know that that's what I do. But anyway, so you know, Benjamin. Uh, <laughs> Yes, I do have a day job. <laughs> I don't just sit here and uh, do Facebook and, 
and YouTube videos all the time. I, I, I would, my family would shoot me because we'd have no money. Uh, none. We'd all be living in cardboard boxes because YouTube does not pay you that well, folks. Uh, <laughs> enough, to, enough to take the family out for dinner and a few other things, but I spend most of my money back into making the videos. It, it's a, it's a never-ending cycle. It just makes it easier to have that, but you know that that's really what it's like. It's it's not uh, not anything a person could make a living off of, uh, at least in my case. So, but I do have over five thousand six hundred subscribers, and I do want you all to remember: if you haven't subscribed to Mac T Ford Edge on YouTube, by all means, please do so. And if you get the inkling, jump over to Mac T Garage on YouTube and uh, subscribe there. I'm trying to build that channel, but unfortunately, I have to pick my videos very carefully because the the Mac T Garage YouTube channel uh, does not generate any funding at all. I have to have a thousand uh, subscribers, so if I post videos there. Uh, they have to be reworks of what I've already done, essentially, uh, because I don't make anything off of them. Uh, nothing. I can't monetize them. So it's just essentially just posting videos to post videos and uh, not making anything out of them because of the new rules from YouTube. So I'm trying to build the channel. So if you can, help me out. Subscribe, and I'll try to keep putting a vid video up occasionally. It's just... I have to watch what I'm doing because I want to keep the Ford Edge YouTube channel going much better because it is the mainstay as far as that goes. But hey, let's see what else we got. Um, <laughs> yeah, Steven, whatever. Uh, always helping people though. You guys know that. I do the videos to help help you all and. Uh, uh, I took the vacation this week. I had full plans on replacing the engine mounts in uh, Lou. Uh, did not happen. I just couldn't do it. But I did manage to change the uh, front shocks, and uh, Rufus, my Ford Ranger, and I will tell you all that Rufus is sweet right now. The front end don't bounce anymore. You know, it, it's it's almost like I got a new truck. Holy cow, that was a great day, but I didn't videotape any of that because, quite frankly, I was doing that in stages. Holy cow, it was so hot, and uh, I was working on it, and the first shock just did not want to come out. I had to twist and turn that thing, and uh, I ended up uh, actually going the route of tightening off the, the top stud of the shock. I actually tightened it until it snapped off. Because uh, loosening it wasn't an option anymore. It was just too bound up. But I could tighten it easier and I could loosen it. So I'll go figure. But I did get it off and then I used another jack to lift the shock and slam it in place. Second one on the passenger side went in like butter. Go figure. But I uh, got that all done. Everything's working good. And uh, so Rufus is out and running. So I'm happy. Got that done. Front end rebuild is coming up. Uh, hopefully by this fall I can manage to swing that and get that done. Oh, hey, there is a California meetup that's going to be happening, so check out the events at MACT Ford Edge for that California meet. And uh, if you're going to go, click on it that you're going to attend. And I guess Stephen uh, Aston will be down there uh, in California to... Uh, meet with everybody there and uh, get a group of you together and uh, we'll of course we'll make that more notable when that does happen. I thought he said that was like November time frame. I'm not sure when. Uh, so look up in the events on that and uh, I just forgot what date it was but I'm sure he'll pop up and let everybody know. Uh, but you know maybe we'll do a Facebook live event with that and then get everything going so that people can uh, attend that. Let's see, what else? Charity says she misses her ranger. Yes, the ranger is always a special special place in you. Yeah, it's a good little pickup truck. Uh, nothing like the new ones coming out. 
But uh, anyway, uh, let's see what else we got going. Steven says November 3rd in California. I don't remember where he said it was at. He'll probably pop up with that in a minute too because I can't really look while I'm trying to monitor all this stuff going on here. But uh, I think it'll be a good event. We got other people trying to get together in other areas of the country. And uh, who knows, maybe in other foreign countries where we got enough folks, they might get together and do a live event for us so we can see what the other edges in other countries are doing. We have a lot of folks in different countries. So uh, Mac T uh, Ford Edge on YouTube is in every country in the world, folks. Every single registered country has views for our Mac T Ford Edge on YouTube. And uh, we're covering uh, quite a few different uh, places uh, here as far as the world goes with Mac T Ford Edge on Facebook. And the Mac T Garage website is in like 50 countries now. So uh, everything seems to be, you know, growing and materializing into something that, you know, I never thought about three years ago. Well, not even three, two and a half years ago, whatever it started at. Because uh, rather new, been working on it and uh, trying to provide you guys with some good quality content. So that being said, I do have to eventually get going because uh, once the girls get back, apparently I am uh, supposed to buy tickets to a movie called Incredibles 2, is it, or something like that? Uh, apparently that is the go-to movie now, and since uh, they, they want me to do that, so I guess I got to get on and buy some tickets. I probably waited too long, and there's not even enough seats left anymore because it just came out with this weekend or something. So might not be something I can do. Might have to do that tomorrow, uh, so we can have seats getting together. But either way. Uh, it's a great day, folks. Uh, enjoy talking to y'all. I want y'all to keep up the good work and uh, keep being nice to each other in this group. That is what you know. This is all about. You guys are very, very gracious in what you do. I appreciate everything you do. And uh, you know, you know. I don't know. I'm at a loss of words to say. It's very, very humbling to see what's going on with you, folks. And I appreciate every one of you because you're all great. And I wish I could meet every one of you. And I try. And maybe here in the future, I'll, I'll be out and about someplace else where I can meet with more of you. And Charity Jackson, this is for you. Charity Jackson, this is for you. you got to put the racing stripes on, on uh, Henry. you got to do it. I want to see the racing stripes, Charity. This is for you, Charity. Hi, Charity. Everybody tell Charity, put the racing stripes on Henry. Yes, we want to see the racing stripes. So, anyway, this is Mac T. Might be the floor today. And I want you to have a good day because mine did too. So, anyway, uh, y'all have a great day. And I'll talk to y'all later.